crew goes overboard, keeping them in your sights is challenging, but technology can help. I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share my impressions of the Sea Angel AIS Flare Echo with DSC from Aqua Ventures, along with its features. This really is an improvement over previous technology. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Mantis Marine, makers of the Mantis Anchor, now available in models with and without a roll bar. Proven to set reliably in the most challenging bottoms, the Mantis Anchor digs like no other, making anchoring safer and therefore boating more enjoyable. Mantis Marine brings to market practical, durable, and affordable marine products, including anchoring gear, scuba diving accessories, and a rechargeable waterproof headlamp for hands-free lighting. Visit mantismarine.com and see for yourself. A crew overboard situation is one of the scariest things that can happen on a boat. There have always been two big issues in recovering a person overboard, finding them and then getting them on board. Finding someone who has gone in the water is a nightmare if you're relying on eyesight alone. If you've ever cruised in an area with crab or lobster pot buoys or fishing net markers, you know how hard it is to see them in the water, and they're about the same size as a person's head. Add in that in the typical two-person cruising boat, the person on the boat is not only trying to spot the person in the water, but is also operating the boat, maybe trying to take sails down, and you can see the problems. And what if the off-watch person was sleeping or preparing a meal when the on-watch person went overboard and they didn't even realize it? That makes it even tougher. Technology is helping considerably with finding the person overboard. There are basically two approaches to this. Sending a signal to search and rescue authorities with a PLB, that's a personal locator beacon, or notifying boats in the area including the one that the person overboard had been on. Both strategies have their applications, but I think for coastal cruising, particularly where there are other boats in the area, and especially if there is more than one person on board, a signal to the mothership and nearby boats gives the best chance for quickly finding the person overboard. This is especially true if that signal includes a GPS fix of where the person overboard now is and can sound an alarm that will wake up any sleeping off-watch crew members. Such technology is now available with a combination of an AIS-DSC locator. This combines an AIS signal showing the location of the person overboard, along with a DSC or VHF alarm that sounds on the mothership. Okay, I absolutely never want to have a crew overboard situation on our boat, and we always tether it when on deck and follow basic safety precautions such as not going on deck at night without the other person in the cockpit. Still, I think that having a person overboard locator is extremely important for all boaters, especially those sailing with just one or two others on board. A couple of years ago at the Miami Boat Show, I got the Sea Angel AIS Flare Echo with DSC from Aqua Ventures. This is an AIS DSC locator. Now, normally I use something for three to six months and see how it works before I write an article or talk about it on the podcast. That's kind of hard to do with something like this. I hope to never actually use it. And I can't legally test how it would work in a simulated crew overboard situation because that would be the equivalent of filing a false report. So instead, I have to rely on the information that the company gave me and their um, simulations there at the boat show that they had gotten special permitted for. When it's active, in other words, when it's in the water, sending a signal, the device will show as SART on a chart plotter that is equipped with an AIS receiver. It's indicating that search and rescue, that's the SAR part, uh, search and rescue transponder. At the same time, a DSC alarm is sent to the mothership, which is programmed with the same MMSI. So you have to have your MMSI number programmed in correctly. 
then it will alert any other crew on board that someone has gone overboard. And believe me, that alarm is plenty loud to wake up the off watch. The AIS and DSC signals will transmit about 5 to 10 miles, depending on wave height. Since the alarm goes out immediately, the mothership should easily be in range. I think that this type of device considerably improves the odds of finding a person overboard when there is someone else on board. The combination of immediately knowing that someone has gone overboard, knowing their location, and enlisting the help of other boats in the area by AIS is a tremendous step forward. Further, since other crew on the mothership are alerted immediately, they can issue a mayday on Channel 16 on the VHF to alert other boats in the area and enlist their aid. That alarm that goes off through the DSC is only going to go to the mothership. It's not going to go to other boats in the area. So you need to get on the radio and tell the other boats that there has been a person overboard. The faster someone can be found, by far the better the odds of rescuing them. Now, you still have the issue of how to get someone back on board, but the less time they've been in the water, the more strength they'll have to assist. Still, a swim platform or transom steps on a catamaran makes it much easier to get someone aboard. I spent a lot of time talking to Richard Nifflin, the president of Aqua Ventures, and also the reps in the booth from the manufacturer. The AIS Flare Echo is Coast Guard approved. The basic one is not Solus approved, but they do have a model that is, it costs $50 more. The big difference is that it transmits a little bit longer. There's a five-year battery warranty on it. The batteries are actually seven years, but they suggest changing them at five years just to be on the safe side. And batteries should be changed if the unit is activated for anything more than a brief test of the battery. Once activated, the battery will provide an AIS and DSC signal for 72 hours. Your MMSI number, that's the big boat MMSI, is programmed into the unit at the time of purchase. There's internal GPS to to give the position report, and there is an integrated strobe light that automatically activates when the unit is activated. This is a monstrous help in finding a person overboard at night. This is also the smallest device on the market, and it's designed to tuck into an inflatable PFD and automatically activate when the person hits the water and the PFD inflates. It can also be activated, and it's waterproof to 33 feet. So you know, in your typical going overboard situation where you may go under six to 10 feet, no problem. A couple of years ago, it sold for $199. I'm not sure of the current price. Ideally, there'd be one per person on the boat. But if you're really budget minded, you can opt for one unit and install it on a watch standers PFD that is passed from one person to the next as they take over. Out of all of the person overboard devices that I've seen at any boat shows and ones I've seen online, I like this best as far as the combination of features and price. It really stood out to me. Obviously, it's what we're using now. I think it's a significant upgrade to our safety gear on Barefoot Gal. However, as with our life raft and our ditch bag, I hope to never actually report to you about how well it actually works. In the link to read, you'll also find out a link at the bottom of the article about how to install it. It's got lots of pictures, so I can't really talk about it here on the podcast, but finding it there will help you in installing it. Okay, that's it for this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast. I certainly hope that this has been helpful for you. I hope that you never have a crew overboard situation, but should you, I hope that you've got the technology aboard to make finding the person and recovering them as simple and as fast as possible. If you find things like this interesting and helpful for you, please subscribe to our podcast, tell cruising friends about our podcast, and if you feel like it, leaving a review in your favorite podcast app helps other people find us too. Thanks. Thanks.